Peter Obi win any election. Peter Obi is polling 1% in Sokoto, 2% in Katsina, 5% in Kanu. That's why the votes are. All states are not equal. The fact that you are doing 70% in Anambra state does not mean somebody doing 10% in Kano is not better than you. Kano is 4 million votes that actually happen. Anambra is what? The, the number of votes in Anambra is the size of one local government in Kaduna state. So all states are not equal. If you poll states and you make them equal, yes, Peter Obi will sweep uh, the southeastern states. He will do well in south-south. Where else? He's not polling well in the uh, southwest, other than a drop in the ocean in Lagos. He is polling in the Christian enclaves in the north. He's polling well. But how many are they? How many? Peter Obi cannot win the election. He doesn't have the number of states. He doesn't have 25% in more than the last time we checked in more than uh, 16 states. He can't go anywhere. Peter Obi is a Nollywood actor, and that's all he will be. This election is between the APC and the PDP because they have the footprint, they have the spread. Ethnicity and religious bigotry will not take you anywhere. And that's what the Labour Party campaign is about. And uh, it's, it's only understandable if somebody like uh, Nasser Rufai goes hysterical, calling people names. It's understandable, you know. And uh, basically, uh, people of the of your height persuasion are known to be hysterical when things don't go their way. So as I said, I don't want to engage that or refer in idle chatter, but I am... I, I, I mean, uh, let's stay on what he said, right. rather than the personality. No, he's he's, 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 he's right, he has right to his own views, anyways. Yeah, that is the idle chatter I'm talking about. Uh, but, but, I mean, he, I mean, you can express your views. Yes. And uh, could that be seen as an idle chatter, too? Of course, if it's idle chatter, it is. Uh, but if he says that uh, the, the race is between the APC and PDP, is that an idle chatter? I can give you my own statistics. Please go ahead. I, I, that. I, yeah. I said here that... Uh, uh, the areas where APC was hoping to cash in, Atiku has chased them out of town. It's clear that uh, places like Borno, they are fighting for their lives. Atiku has moved in. APC has, I mean, Labour Party has moved in. What this Muslim etiquette has done is to awaken, uh, you know, a sleeping majority. People who never felt they had anything to, to gain in the political system because they were busy. They had their view that the voting for anybody is moving from one suffering to another. But now they have woken up. Somehow, this APC ticket has woken up people and has exposed uh, APC's uh, failure and has managed to create a link between PDP and APC as those who have been ruling us for years and the consequence of which we are suffering the way we are doing. So everybody, every Nigerian is now determined to have a say in this election. And those who Nasser Rafai, for example, claims that the, the Christians were not many, that Northern Christians are, no, are nothing, they are not many. I, wait for, I want him to wait for 25th uh, February and he'll see the shock of his life. You know, when he goes around banding about 5 million, 6 million votes in Kano, he forgets that uh, in that 5 or 6 million, Igbos are about 1 million. Igbos alone, resident in various towns in Kano State. And for the first time, because of the insecurity that his government and their type have created, people couldn't travel to their villages to go and register as it used to be. They register where they are. Those factors will play out in this election. Those factors. It's, it's a mistake for you to say that uh, 6 million registered voters in Lagos are all Yorubas. They are not. They comprise Hausas, Ibos, Ibibios, Kanuris, all sorts of people. Those people will vote where they are at. So that's 6 million he's boasting about, close to 1 million are Ibos. And I'm sure, uh, I don't think he can boast that those people will vote APC in Kano. Why does, I mean, poll after poll, uh, Peter Obi is ahead. I know that those who have criticized the result of some of this poll, why does some of uh, the opposition believe that those polls are inaccurate and Peter Obi does not have a chance? Have a chance? 
because they are living, uh, they have a sense of delusion. Uh, naturally, for every politician that is contesting for election, he thinks he would win. That's why he's contesting. But it gets to a point where you are living under delusion. You don't want to see the facts and accept them as the facts. So uh, the only way I see it is delusion. And uh, like my friend, uh, Bola, for, for obvious reasons, he has a lot of money that he has been pumping in, and uh, people are after that money. And uh, they continue to feed him with uh, what he wants to hear. For a man who says uh, his life ambition is to be president, uh, any information that you give him that will reinforce that view to him, he will raise more money for you. So they create a sense of delusion, which only they see the result, but no other person does. It's delusion. How difficult was it for you to switch and now? Anything changed dramatically? Well, uh, on the side of the Labour Party, you mean? Um, what has changed is that uh, areas where we had not expected uh, labor to do well, they are galloping through. And um, the momentum is so much that uh, it's difficult to contain. You know, uh, when this 2023 election season commenced, the Peter Obi was not, was not on the card. During the computations as to what would happen, the expectation was that the race was a straight one between APC and PDP. Then out of nowhere, Peter Obi comes in, and then followed by Rabi Kwankoso. And the whole permutations change. Unfortunately for the two parties, the APC and PDP, they didn't have the capacity to factor in these new dynamics, and the thing is overrunning them. As we speak, uh, Peter Obi has run uh, uh, PDP out of Adamawa State, they, they have run PDP out of uh, uh, Taraba State, Plato State, uh, Benue State, uh, Kaduna State, uh, and quite a lot of the states in the north where our calculation was we might, were, were targeting 25%. But now we are targeting anything from 55 to 70% in majority of the states in the north. Of course, uh, also, we had some doubts about whether or not the Southeast will come out on mass to support Peter Obi. But to our uh, present surprise, it is now a complete overrun. No party, they only go to Southeast to campaign as a form of tourism, you know, and to further demarket themselves. In the South-South, where we thought we were going to compete on a 50-50 basis with uh, any other party, I mean, maybe PDP, we find ourselves uh, targeting 80-90% in the South-South. So that's why it is. Uh, I can tell you that even in the far North, the so-called far North, I'll give you an example. Two weeks back, I sent some campaign materials to one of our supporters in Katsina. And uh, when it got to the motor park and the poor man went to collect the campaign materials, uh, the motor park security wanted to see what was in the bag. And when it was discovered that uh, it was a pita of big dirty t-shirts, they ransacked it. Everybody got a piece of it. And uh, what they were telling the poor man was that uh, in Katsina they are tired. They've been told over and over to vote for their fellow Muslim. They did vote for their fellow Muslims in past elections and see where they are. Most of them were refu are now refugees living in the motor parks. So this time around, they will not listen to anybody mm -hmm. telling them to vote for their brother because he's a Muslim. Because being, voting for a Muslim only ended up, uh, them ending up in a motor park as refugees. I, I mean... There is something strange about the Kaduna state governor. It is his capacity to, to call other people things they could have called him. He said that the Labour Party is campaigning based on ethnic and religious bigotry. In fact, this is a, a, a laughable claim by Erufai, governor of Kaduna State.
for a governor whom the Southern Kaduna People's Union, Sokapo, had accused of ethnic cleansing of their people. About because of their Christian religious belief and ethnicity, they accuse so Kapo accuse Erofi of ethnic cleansing. Now this same person is the one accusing Labour Party of campaigning based on religion and ethnicity. That is to say the least hypocritical. Yes, so Kapo, the umbrella body of all organizations in Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna have been experiencing serious killings, ethnic cleansing of their people, they are alleged, driven from their homes because of their religion and ethnicity. And they are the governor and they accuse him of ethnic cleansing. This is the person that is accusing the Labour Party of all things, ethnic and religious bigotry. For someone who disregarded the Christian population of his state, in fact, there are people who believe that Kaduna state is Christian population is about 50% of the population or more. Yet, Aero Fire runs on a Muslim, Muslim ticket in that candidate, in that that state in total disregard of sensibility and inclusivity of Christians. Yet he is the one that has the mind to say that Labour Party, P2B, is run on ethnicity and religion. What a hypocritical statement. Now, for someone whose presidential candidate in a multi religious and multi ethnic society like Nigeria is running a Muslim Muslim ticket. And one of the governors of his state, of, of APC, Ganduje of Kano State, gathered Islamic clerics and told them it is on a viral video that the Muslim Muslim ticket is a jihad that must be accomplished. For that person, he didn't see anything wrong with what Ganduje said. He didn't see anything wrong with Muslim Muslim ticket of APC to accuse Labour Party of running campaigning on it, ethnic and religious bigotry. is the most hypocritical statement of the century. And he is saying it with a straight face. You can see his straight face. He was saying it as if he said the truth. And that's how they deceive the public especially the undiscernible public who take everything they said, hook, line, and sinker. APC and their office politics in Kaduna exemplified et ethnic supremacy and religious supremacy and bigotry to the highest level. So they, they cannot, therefore, have any morality on any moral ground to accuse the Labour Party of all things campaigning on ethno-religious sentiment. We all know that the presidential candidate of Labour Party, Peter Obi, has been the only candidate who has been saying it, say, do not vote for me because of religion. Do not vote for me because of my, my ethnicity. Vote for me because I'm competent, because I'm the best. How many presidential candidates, the front runners, have been able to have the courage to say these kind of things? Yet, this is the person that Erofi is accusing of running religious and bigotry, ethno religious uh, bigotry campaign. It shows you how these people lie. With straight face. It's not surprising. Don't forget that this same Erofar lied that it was Peter B detained him as governor when Peter was governor in Anambra State, when he 
uh, Erofai came to Anambra to, to monitor election. CP2B detained him. He lied. But the, 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 the lies were, the, the lead was blown. When people went and they zoomed the court papers. Because Erofai sued DSS. Because it was DSS from Abuja that detained him. That he had no business being there where he was at the time. That he alleged it was P2B and he was saying it with straight face. Saying it everywhere. Even amidst the elders of northern Nigeria. So why should anybody believe him? Then he was talking about that uh, P2B cannot win. It is also laughable. Good enough, this is a man, he said that cannot get up to 200 people in Kaduna. But P2B has locked down Kaduna State three times in three places. Locked down Kaduna, Kafancha, and what have you, and Zaria. Now he, 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 he swallowed his pride by saying the same person that cannot feed gather 200 people. He now claimed that from their own survey, they, he claimed that other surveys are not good. It's only the one conducted by Erufa. And the one they conducted, they didn't make the data available so that we can put them to same scrutiny. He's claiming that he put other people's surveys. Claimed that from the last time they checked, P2B can only win 25% in 16 states. Wow. Even in the bias survey of, 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 of Erufa, because that, that survey must be very biased. For P2B to even pull up to 16 states, it means, man, P2B is on the way to winning the election. And that is why they are cheating. And that is why uh, Erufa is jumping from one television station to another to tell them why P2B cannot win. So it's, 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 it's important that Nigerians take note of his past record, his previous lies, and know that they cannot take him on his face value, this latest round of lies. Because the figure he is bandying about, nobody knows where he conducted it. Where did he conduct it? Where are the figures? Where are the data? Bloomberg gave us their data. NOI gave us their data. Nestia gave us their data. All the other uh, uh, pool stars gave us their data. Where is the data of Aerofire? Uh, their own data is a secret data. Then we have to believe their own and not believe those who, who carried out scientific data analysis. And then believe the one Aerofire is telling us when he is fond of telling us lies based on the records that we can see. Somebody who is presiding over Kaduna, somebody who is from APC, accusing Labour Party of bigotry, a of religious bigotry. Why should anybody take him serious? Why should anybody take him serious? It means Every other thing that comes out from his mouth are made up to satisfy his political interest. So that uh, uh, in the bias opinion poll done by Hero 5, P2B is, uh, is getting 25% in 16 states in their last check, according to him. It means that P2B is winning the election. And you can see the way he disregarded the Christians. He said Peter B is only getting uh, some he pulling well in the Christian enclave. He described them as an enclave. But the other ones, they are states, Sokoto states. Uh, he's pulling this in Sokoto state. Peter B is pulling this in Kano state. But where he's pulling well is in Christian enclave. They are not states, they are enclaves. 
to show you the disdain he had for Christians. Well, Baba Shilawa, the former secretary to the federal government, has already made it clear that they will answer him very well on the election day of February 25. Since he claimed they are, how many are they? He was asking for how many are they? Well, let me give him an example of some of the Christian dominated states in Northern Nigeria. This include Adamawa, Taraba State, Gombe State, Plateau State, Benue State, Nasarawa State, Kogi State, Federal Capital Territory Abuja. And I, I can even add Kaduna State because Kaduna State is being argued that there are more Christians in Kaduna than Muslims. But it's just that they use their, their, their power in government over the years to cut the Christian population into pieces so that they become irrelevant. And then you have some states that have good population of Christians in the north. These states include Bronu, Yobe, Bauchi. This will have at least 30% of their population that are Christians. You talk about KB. If you go to KB, about 30% of the population of KB state are Christians. So if all these people are to vote, they are as they are to vote according to religion. To be will win all those states with landslide. That is the truth. And the error also lied that P2B is not pulling well in Southwest, except a drop in the ocean in Lagos, which is not true because all the opinion polls so far, but the one that was done by Bloomberg, NOI, uh, We Together Foundation. And what have you? P2B have been doing excellently well following Tinubu bumper to bumper in the southwest, as they say in local balance. And the gap is getting narrower and narrower as prominent Yoruba leaders continue to identify with P2B and insisting for fairness, justice, and equity that the next president of Nigeria should come from the southeast. Now to the big question. How P2B will win? Because LFIS want to deceive some people, we play mind game to say that P2B cannot win. Well, this is how P2B will win. P2B will win the whole of Southeast and South South. And that will give him 11 states. That will give P2B 11 states. South, South, and South, East. We give P2B 11 states that he will win. Here, we're not talking about getting 25%. He's going to win most of the states in the Middle Belt, generally. He's going to win Adamawa. You heard Baba Shilawal saying it there. It has run PDP out of town in Adamawa State, Labour Party. He's going to win Taraba, he's going to win Gombe, he's going to win Platt, he's going to win Benue, he's going to be win Nasarawa, he's going to win Koki, he's going to win FCT. And P2B is likely to win in Kaduna. If he doesn't win Kaduna, he will get up to 40% of the vote in Kaduna. Now, if you calculate this, you see, if you add 11 states of uh, South, 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 and Southeast, then you add uh, Adamawa, Taraba, Gombe, Plateau, Benue, Nasarawa, Kogi, FCT, and Kaduna. 
That's about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 8, 9, 9 plus, plus 11. That's 9 plus 11. That's 20 states. Then P2B will win Lagos. That will make 21 states. Now, there is no, no state in the Southwest that P2B will not get at least 35% of the vote. Because anywhere in the Southwest, go and write it down today, anywhere in the Southwest that Tinubu comes first, P2B will follow him last second. There will be, there's nothing for PDP in Southwest in terms of the presidency. So that is it, enough. So he is going to get 25, 30, 30%, 35%, 30 to 35% in Southwest. And that is enough for P2B to be declared president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Even without winning any, without getting 25% in Kano, or Sokoto, or Bauchi, or some of those other states in the Northeast and Northwest. But so generally, this is the pathway for P2B to be president. So for uh, 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 Erofra to say that there's no pathway for P2B to win, he lied. He's lying to Nigeria. He's playing mind game. P2B will win. And I've shown you the pathway. He will win 11 states. South 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 is giving him 11 states. Then in the North Central, Middle Belt, and part of the, you know, Middle Belt is, is uh, compasses both North East, North West, and North Central states. That's why you see Adamawa is part of the Middle Belt. Baraba is part of the Middle Belt. Even Bronu is part of the Middle Belt. Because Dr. Kogu, the President General of, of Middle Belt Forum currently, is from Bronu State. So P2B winning all these states in the North Central and in the Middle Belt, and winning South, South, and Southeast, and then winning Lagos, and also getting 35% at least in all the states in the South, Southwest. Because everywhere Tinubu comes first, P2B is going to come second. So P2B will have enough spread to become the next president of Nigeria. So Tinubu lied and Erufai lied when he said there's no pathway for P2B to be president, that he cannot win. P2B can win and win convincingly, and he can win on the first ballot. All things been equal, based on the what is available right now, on the data value. And that to show you that P2B will win, for a bias survey by Erufai, to give P2B 16 states already. That should get you thinking that P2B is on his way to Asura Villa. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button. Hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel, I hit the notification bell. Anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like the video, Google will recommend it for more people. And they will, with more people watching it, they will see the need to disregard lies being told by Erofi and people like him and be confident enough to cast their vote for P2B to win and become the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on February 25, 2023. God bless you and yours.